All right, welcome back now, everyone, to the second chapter to the prophetic book of Jeremiah. As we know, Jeremiah is an amazing prophetic book through the scriptures, as all of the word of God is prophecy speaking to us now, speaking to them then, and speaking to the times to come. Most importantly, eternity. Hallelujah. So Jeremiah is very special and referenced through a multitude of other scriptures, talking about backing scripture with scripture. Daniel most specifically references Jeremiah when entering in and being a part of the 70-year exile into Babylon. And we can see so much detail in this prophetic word. But nonetheless, we are in the second chapter dealing with Judah's apostasy. And this has specific ramifications to the church of Christ today. Let's repeat that. This has specific ramifications to the church of Christ today. For we see the body and bride dealing with this very thing, apostasy, a topic that is screeched upon or shrieked back from or not wanting to be touched upon because of the reality and the immensity of it, just like repentance and many other topics such as sin and rebellion and the overcoming by the grace and the mercies and the blood of Christ Jesus. But yet these are, these are necessary for the progression of the faith. We cannot remain as babes, but it's time to move forward, to face the truth, to abide in Christ, and to allow his word, his word to abide in us through much prayer, meditation, and seeking his face daily. Hallelujah. So, nonetheless, let us not hesitate any longer. And we know the Lord is opening our minds as his word is spoken in and increasing our faith in like measure. So chapter 2, verse 1. Let's go forward. The word of the Lord states, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and proclaim in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember concerning you the devotion of your youth, the love of your betrothals, your following after me in the wilderness, through a land not sown, Israel was holy to the Lord, the first of his harvest. All who ate of it became guilty. Evil came upon them, declares the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What injustice did your fathers find in me, that they went far from me and walked after emptiness and became empty? And they did not say, Where is the Lord who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of deep darkness, through a land that no one crossed and where no man dwelt? And I brought you into the fruitful land to eat its fruit and its good things. But you came and defiled my land, and my inheritance you made an abomination. Verse 8 now. The priest did not say, Where is the Lord? And those who handle the law did not know me. Let's repeat that. And those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers also transgressed against me. And the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that did not profit. Therefore, I will yet contend with you, declares the Lord. And with your sons' sons, I will contend. For cross to the coastlands of Katim and see and send to Gadar, and observe closely, and see if there has been such a thing as this. Has a nation changed gods, when they were not gods? But my people have changed their glory, for that which does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this, and shudder, be very desolate, declares the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, to hew for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. Is Israel a slave, or is he a home-born servant? Why has he become a prey? The young lions have roared at him, they have roared loudly, and they have made his land a waste. His cities have been destroyed without inhabitant. Also, the men of Memphis and Tephanes have shaved the crown of your head. Have you not done this to yourself? by your forsaking the Lord your God when he led you in the way? But now, what are you doing on the road to Egypt to drink the waters of the Nile? 
Or what are you doing on the road to Assyria to drink the waters of the Euphrates? Your own wickedness will correct you, and your apostasies will reprove you. Sorry, and your apostasies will reprove you. Know therefore and see that it is evil and bitter. For you to forsake the Lord your God, and the dread of me is not in you, declares the Lord God of hosts. Verse 20. For long ago I broke your yoke and tore off your bonds, but you said, I will not serve. For on every high hill and under every green tree you have lain down as a harlot. Yet I planted you a choice vine, a completely faithful seed. Now then, have you turned yourself before me into the degenerate shoots of a foreign vine? Although you wash yourself with lye and use much soap, the stain of your iniquity is before me, declares the Lord God. How can you say, I am not defiled? I have not gone after the bells. Look at your way in the valley. Know what you have done. You are a swift young camel entangling her ways, a wild donkey accustomed to the wilderness that sniffs the wind in her passion. In the time of her heat, who can turn her away? All who seek her will not become weary. In her month they will find her. Keep your feet from being unshod and your throat from thirst. But you said, It is hopeless. No, for I have loved strangers, and after them I walk. As the thief is shamed when he is discovered, so the house of Israel is shamed. They, their kings, their princes, and their priests, and their prophets, who say to a tree, You are my father, and to a stone, You gave me birth. For they have turned their back to me, and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they will say, Arise and save us. But where are your gods, which you made for yourself? Let them arise, if they can save you in the time of your trouble. For according to the number of your cities are your gods, O Judah. Verse 29. Why do you contend with me? You have all transgressed against me, declares the Lord. In vain I have struck your sons. They accepted no chastening. Your sword has devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. O generation, heed the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness to Israel? Or a land of thick darkness? Why do my people say, We are free to roam, we will come no more to thee? Can a virgin forget her ornaments, or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. How well you prepare your way to seek love! Therefore, even the wicked women you have taught your ways. Also, on your skirts is found the lifeblood of the innocent poor. You did not find them breaking in, but in spite of all these things, yet you said, I am innocent. Surely his anger is turned away from me. Behold, I will enter into judgment with you, because you say, I have not sinned. Why do you go around so much changing your way? Also, you shall be put to shame by Egypt, as you were put to shame by Assyria. From this place also you shall go out with your hands on your head. For the Lord has rejected those in whom you trust, and you shall not prosper with them. Amen. So this brings to close the second chapter of Jeremiah. What a power-packed start to this book. What a power-packed start to the beginning of this ministry of the brother Jeremiah by the Spirit of Almighty God, the Lord of hosts. And we see as it goes into chapter 3, he begins to discuss the polluted land here afterward and how he's rejecting the people of Judah, the people of Israel, the people of Jerusalem, and we could even say today the people who profess Jesus Christ as Lord. Because what has happened here is they are proclaiming to be clean. Many today in the church are proclaiming to be clean. As he said, you continue to wash yourself with soap. You continue to declare yourself clean with hyssop and pure but yet, have you forgotten your way in the valley? Have you not gone after Baal's false gods? Are you not defiled, says the Lord our God? Look through the whole chapter again, please. For he has planted a choice vine for us all, family. And everyone listening, he's planted a choice vine. The vine is Christ Jesus. Please reference John, the Gospel John, chapter 15, and you'll see very clearly that Jesus is the vine. And those who believe upon him for eternal life are to repent, are to turn to him, are to turn to Father God, are to cling to him, are to be branches bearing fruit for his kingdom. Those who bear fruit 
will be pruned. There will be suffering. And yet those who bear no fruit, those who spit in his face, those who continue to live in their defilement, in their way, they will be cut off and burned as chaff and wither away. It is prophesied, it is written in other words, that this is what is happening. Verse 31 states again to repeat it, O generation, heed, heed the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness to Israel or a land of thick darkness? Why do my people say we are free to roam? We will come no more to thee? You see, he has been present. He has performed miracles. He has opened the door, Christ being that door, Christ being that gate to the Father. And he has done so much more than that. Are we breathing right now? Are we listening to this voice of this lowly man speaking the word of the Lord right now? Are we able to hear and breathe and speak and to lift our hearts? Are we thinking is there mockery and scoffing at these words at this hour? Or is there rejoicing? Nonetheless, either way, we have been received. We have been spoken unto. We have been blessed by the Most High God. No matter what walk of life we've come from, no matter what despair we've been through, no matter what blessing we've received, God has been present and we can see His hand in our lives. He has not been a land of thick darkness, especially to Israel, the believer. And, and we are not free to roam. We are to worship God Almighty, Yahweh, and His Son, Christ Jesus, Messiah, Yahusha, or Yeshua, whatever you prefer to call. The reality is it's Jesus Christ and Father God. But this whole chapter, as we can clearly see, is discussing those who have tasted the mercies of God, who have tasted the grace of God, who have seen the hand of God move, but yet have chosen to go back to the world. Has God set you free from your addictions, my friend? Has God set you free from your lusts? Has God set you free from broken relationships and, and just immeasurable darkness that you have brought on yourself or, or situations that were brought upon you? I can certainly say He has to some degree. And if not, we need to regather the, the, the questioning and examine self to find out where our testimony of Jesus Christ in our lives really, li really, really stands. Because we need to have a foundation. It's upon His Word, but His Word needs to be alive to us that we have our own personal testimony. Now is the hour. You see, every second counts, and time is dwindling. See, this is a word to myself as much as anybody else. We need heed the Word of the Lord today. We need to know that many are falling away and yet already have. Even those who seem on the outer appearance that they may not have, have fallen away. For they don't even know they've fallen away, as clearly as this has made it seem. As the word has declared it boldly to us, they believe they are in the right. And we see in the New Testament, Christ warns us that many who will persecute the true of the body, the true worshipers of God in spirit and in truth, will think they're doing God a service. Have you seen this in your life? Has this experience held true in you? Let us evaluate. Let us ask these serious questions to discern and call out to the Lord to, to make sure that our salvation is, is true, that our hope is resting where it need be resting, that we are active in our faith, that, that, that we are not falling away, that we are not apostate, apostate, but that we are sincere, reverent, loving the Father God and His Son that He sent to redeem us from our sins upon the, by the cross and by the blood shed. He is risen. He is alive. And His Spirit that led Him to crucifixion and obedience is the same Spirit that rose Him from the dead, the resurrection. It's that same Spirit, Him, the Holy Spirit, that has been given on to us to give us the power to die to ourselves and to rise up in Christ boldly, to live the holy life, to walk with Him, to follow Him, and to yearn for Him and to grow deeper and deeper in His truth. Let us desire the Lord today. I pray that we're being convicted right now under the sound of this voice. I pray that we are growing in our faith. I pray that we see there is a deep need to cling to God more than anything else, that we must worship Him and love Him with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and then from that we will naturally, supernaturally, divinely, spiritually love one another as ourselves with the God, a God-be kind of love as we are supposed to. Through Him it is possible. With man it is not. If we cling to ourselves for strength in the nations and other peoples, we will burn and perish in the everlasting darkness.
in fires of hell. But if we cling to God and His Son that He sent to redeem us, Christ Jesus, we will rejoice and sing holy, holy, holy with the angels of heaven's glory for all of eternity. And that is something we can never even imagine, the wonders and the just beauty. There's not even a word here on this side of heaven to describe the wondrous, marvelous works of the Lord, let alone that which awaits those who love Him and are faithful to Him this side of heaven, this short vapor of a time we have here. Anyhow, there's a lot to think on in this second chapter, and I thank you for bearing with me and heeding the word of the Lord today and receiving what is being spoken unto us. Let us do as we've been commanded through his word. Let us do as he has called us to do, not as a burden, not as a weight, not as a chain, but lighthearted and free as the yoke of Christ is light and, and, and not a burden at all. But because we love him, for he first loved us, we will obey and walk in his way, for his grace is sufficient. We'll see you around the bend in the third chapter. Lord willing, until then, amen.